week, more than 30 states filed a federal lawsuit against Meta, alleging Facebook and Instagram are designed to be addictive and harm children's mental health. That lawsuit was signed by 33 state attorneys generals in San Francisco federal court. Now a UC Berkeley student is working on AI technology to try to combat the negative feelings users get when they are mindlessly scrolling on their phones. Here's the fun one. Sana Pandey looks at her life like an algorithm, always drawn to a formula. At 12 years old, she discovered fencing. Panda USA from the Junior Olympics. Now at 20, she's sharpening her skills for a different kind of battle. Sana doesn't just want to be a student. She wants to be a superhero. I think if not saving the world, I want to at least make it a better place. Her mission began a few years ago when she was the only teenager on the planet, not on social media. It just never really called to me. And then when COVID hit, I ended up wanting to stay in touch in a way that wasn't just phone calls. Right away, she noticed a change in how she saw the world and herself. I realized that like all of the information I was getting about current events was through a very specific lens. And that was changing how I thought the rest of the world thought about it. Um, and then also, uh, when I was seeing all these beautiful women all the time, I didn't realize at the time that there was kind of editing or things that were going behind the scenes to make them look that way. It wasn't until she got to UC Berkeley that she discovered her superpower, building AI technology to help combat the negative psychological effects of social media by changing how the recommender systems used by Google, Facebook, and other companies filter out what a user sees on their feed. Talking, but... Dr. Mark Nitzberg is Sana's professor and the executive director at the UC Berkeley Center for Human Compatible AI. Half of the world's population gets up in the morning and looks at something online. And recommender systems are deciding what they see first and second and so forth. So things that make you angry when something looks like it's unfair, things that make you feel maybe worried about yourself or how you look. All of these things catch your attention, and, and so that's what tends to bubble to the top. At this Berkeley lab, among the robots and other AI innovations, Sana is building something that's not about what you can see. It's about how it makes you feel. To make sure that the content you're seeing is meaningful and you don't feel that icky feeling after you use social media for four hours. Um, and so instead of looking at time spent or things like uh, how many times you've clicked on something. We're looking at some more meaningful metrics like uh, what your comment content could have been or um, what your general user profile might be and what you think you'll uh, like in the future. And so what her algorithm is doing is, is taking that literally asking users somewhat uh, randomly um, how they feel and how they feel about the, you know, their, their experience online last week or how they feel in general. And these are actually carefully crafted, you know, from a social science perspective, carefully crafted questionnaires. Um, and they, they take the outputs of the questions and feed them back into the algorithm. And when you put that back into the system, it turns out that, that the outcomes are improved in terms of your well-being. As for who is buying her AI algorithm? I think I can't specifically name a ton of names, unfortunately, because of like lab contracts. But I can say that we're working very closely and collaboratively with some of the biggest names out there in social media, um, and we're work and they're also all very invested in creating a better, more kind of long-term beneficial product for their users. But this passion is about more than just business. Sana is carrying on a legacy started by her father, who was also an AI engineer. He died when Sana was just 15 years old, but she can still hear his voice. Um, actually, the idea of our family of superheroes came from him. We, he used to always say, like, we are superheroes and we can take on anything. I think that's actually where it all started for me. So I think for him, it would be a natural follow-up to our superhero family. Saving the world one algorithm at a time. Hmm. So inspiring to yeah. spend the day with her. I mean, the future is bright with students like Sana. It's amazing that she didn't get on social media until the pandemic. Right. So she was actually able to see social media with this kind of fresh view and a fresh yep. lens and, and can kind of soak it all in from a different perspective than yeah. we all see it from. It, exactly. I mean, she had kind of the emotional maturity mm -hmm. to recognize a change in herself wow. by using some of these apps. And that's really what inspired her to create this algorithm. And, it, you know, if it works and it's, it is working, it's going to be in all these different social media sites. And hopefully it'll improve 
people's mental health when you're constantly scrolling all the time.